What's good, geeks? I'm Jake. And I am Gen X. I'm Anna. I'm Gen Z. And, and we, we are Generational, Generational geeks. geeks. So today, we are reviewing... Black Widow. The Black Widow movie. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a 2021 American superhero film based on the MCU comic book movie of the same name. Character of the same, based on the character of the same. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> this was produced by Marvel Studios and distributed by Walt Disney Studios Motion Pictures. It is the 24th film in the MCU. That's a lot of films. They're getting real creative with the names too, you know. Loki, <laughs> yeah. Black well, that's Widow. Not a film. I mean, just the names. <laughs> this was directed by Kate Shortland. Doctor Strange. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> she's directed and written a bunch of stuff that I haven't even heard of, and we'll get into that a little bit more later. Oh. This is set right after the events of the Civil War, Captain America Civil War. Yes. 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 <laughs> uh, this is starring, obviously, Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow, as she usually is. <laughs> Um, Natasha Romanoff, whatever you want to call her. She was also in Ghost in the Shell. I was going to say Ghost of the Shell. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to spice it up a bit. <laughs> and Lucy. Those are both seen, good. I haven't seen either, but They're he has. Good. Yeah. Apparently. <laughs> uh, Florence Poe, pa, however you say it. You know, I'm bad with names. We know this. As Yelena. Yelena? Yelena. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going right off the thing. I'm going to read it as it is. Pug. <laughs> Belova. You know, we got all the Russian Yelena names Yelena Belova. Yelena Belova. It rolls right off the tongue. <laughs> she was also in Little Women and uh, Little Woman. Women. 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 Little Women. <laughs> Multiple women. <laughs> uh, and Fighting With My Family, which... I haven't seen either haven't of seen those. Either one of those either. Finally, <laughs> this man watches a lot of movies. And David Harborough as Alexi, which I find funny because he was in Stranger Things, and in Stranger Things there was a guy named Alexi. But that's Bonds. He ended up in Russia. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't even... I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> and he was also in Hellboy, which I still haven't oh, watched. Heck, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen the new one either. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it looks good. They didn't get very good reviews. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and Rachel Wise as Wise Ways. Wise. Wise Ways. <laughs> 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 as Melina from The Born Legacy and My Cousin Rachel. Haven't seen either <laughs> of those. I've seen Born Supremacy or Born Legacy. So I've seen all the Born movies. I don't remember her in the Born movie, though. Oh. But that was the one with the dude that plays Hawkeye, not the normal dude from the Bourne movies. Can't think of his name. I can't either. Anyways, wow. Black Widow was released in the United States on July 9th. Uh, simultaneously, it was released in theaters and on Disney Plus, the premium access of D Disney Plus. It is the first film in Phase 4 of the MCU, so Phase 3 is done and gone, and we're on to phase four. Yay. <laughs> uh, the film was delayed three times. It was supposed to come out like May of 2020. And then it got moved out a couple more times and we finally got to see it. So, and that was because of... Rora! Rora. Beer bug. Uh, the film was met uh, generally with favorable reviews from the critics. Of course it was. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> of course. Um, it an action-packed spy thriller, as as you would think for a Black Widow movie, um, and it's about Natasha Romanoff and her kind of confronting the darker parts of her childhood and her past, and there's... what? <laughs> I thought you would... No. Alright. Um, there's this dangerous conspiracy that ties into her past, and that's kind of why she has to go back and face it. Um, she is pursued by forces that will stop at nothing 
to get her and bring her down. <laughs> it sounds like a Disney Channel <laughs> movie. <laughs> um, and Natasha must deal with her history as a spy and with some broken relationships that she hasn't tried to fix or rekindle that she left behind long before she was an Avenger. This is a spoiler-free review, however, there will be spoilers after the review. But so if you haven't, we will seen give it, you a spoiler yes, warning. If you haven't seen it, we start watch spoilers. till the end, yes. and then we'll tell you when the spoilers are coming. That is true. So this was rated PG thirteen for intense sequences of violence, action, some language, and thematic material. <laughs> I don't know what that. Means. Okay. I just copied it down from what they said. I thought that was guys kind of plagiarism. I was gonna look at it and see what thematic material actually meant, but comment it. Yeah, let us you know. know what it means. This is an action adventure sci-fi, and like we said before, this takes place right after Civil War. So, what did you think was good about this movie? Obviously, the performances, as usual, MCU project. It's going to have good performances. Um, I liked who they cast as as as. Yolina. Mm -hmm. I think that it was a good choice and I think that she was a good actress. Um, I think the action sequences were pretty good for an action movie. A lot of CGI. CGI wasn't great in, in some of it, but... But hey, it was Marvel CGI, so obviously yep. it wasn't like awful. The fight scenes were decent. Yeah. Pretty well choreographed. Yeah. What stood out as negative to you? It was really predictable, and which you know these types of movies usually are, and you know this was an MCU movie, but it felt like more of a spy thriller type movie. Which I mean, Isn't I find fine yeah. because it's about Black Widow, right? So, and I like Black Widow as a character, but I feel like the writing and the directing left. A lot to be to desired. desired. Yeah. Blackluster. Yeah. Right. Final rating? Um, I'm going to give this probably a 7. I was going to say 7.5. Going to upstage you. This was probably my second or third least favorite in the MCU. Wow. Least favorite movie in the MCU. But we'll get into that, into that when we talk spoilers. <laughs> yes, so if you have not seen the movie, go ahead, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, comment what you think you're going to think about it, and then come back and tell us what you actually thought about it. Uh, but this is your cutoff if you have not watched the movie. Spoilers. Yes. Yes, starting now. So, if you haven't seen the movie, leave, watch it, and then come back. Yes. So, first spoiler. Taskmaster as a woman was very disappointing. <laughs> it was expected, but very disappointing. This is a very established and popular character in the comic books, in video games, in animated series. And they just completely gender swapped it and ruined a perfectly good and villain. It's not even that they ruined him, it's that they changed his backstory as well. Oh yeah. Well, like, yeah, they're gonna gender swap him, why not change the backstory? Like at that point it's not, it's a new character, it's not Taskmaster no. anymore. They could have called this character anything they wanted to, and they could have had the same Taskmaster abilities of, what? what is it, like photo, memory, blah, blah, blah. But and in this... Being so, able to look at something and copy it. Yeah. Copy so its moves. copy the movements, copy the abilities of non-superpowered characters. But they had to use a chip in the back of the head for this character. So, so it wasn't even like... So not only did they gender swap it, change its backstory, they also made it weaker. Change the ability. Yeah. Which... 
You could have just created ability, a whole new character. With this ability, uh, how they changed it, it made it seem weaker. Because yeah. Taskmaster, in the video games, in the comics, he's an incredibly smart guy that can just look at something and copy its moves as long as it's not super-powered. Yeah. And he can go up against people who are super-powered and still well, yeah, come out Yeah, because he's got all these moves. Exactly. Yeah. He has moves, he has gadgets, and the way they changed it in this movie made it seem like he was just, she, I guess, was just some one-off uh, trick pony. Yeah. One trick pony. One trick pony. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, the funny part that I find personally hilarious was that Taskmaster for 95% of the movie yeah, with the mask on. was played by a man. And the only time it was played by the woman that they showed in the movie was when the helmet was not on. And that was like two scenes. So I don't know if they originally planned on using... Having that guy being Taskmaster. And then for some reason at the last minute decided to throw in the, the whole... Taskmaster is a woman thing, but who knows? Yeah, w women empowerment. Let's make this guy play Taskmaster throughout the whole yes. movie, and yes. then we'll say it's because, been a girl this whole time. Because yeah. you know, you know, Scarlet's uh, body double, stunt double, whatever you want to call it, is a woman. Is a woman. You know, uh, Florence, hers was a Yelena. woman. Yeah. But, you know, Taskmaster in a suit, they're going to put a guy in it. So. And it's like, I don't think that the women who are saying this is empowering really understand how toxic something like this is. Because you're taking an established character that already has a backstory, already has preset things with them, and you're taking it and you're making it a woman. And that's, that's tokenism, that's not empowerment, because you're taking something that is already something else and making it into something it's not, rather than taking new source material, taking in new ideas, new abilities, and making something brand new. You're recycling things and making them worse than they were before, and that's, that's more toxic than it is empowering, and that's what these people don't understand. Well, and I think they could have, realistically, they could have created a whole new character still had it be a female in the movie whether it wore a suit or didn't wear a suit whatever similar abilities and then just you know different name create original characters that people are going to enjoy instead of taking established characters that already have a following and a fan base and, and tokenizing them yeah and it's like so many girls in this like generation, this time period, are getting like such special treatment from the media and stuff that when they grow up and become mature adults and go out to try and get a job or do this or do that, they're going to realize that they're not always going to be treated like a princess or a queen because of their gender. They're going to be treated like every single other person unless they get their act together and actually become a good person. Your gender isn't going to make you this almighty being. But, am she you? No. <laughs> and it's like, characters like Sylvie, you know, she was like a, a lady. Oh, and Loki. Yeah, yeah. She, was, she was a lady. That was fine, because there was a lady Loki in the comics. Well, and it's... It's explainable. And, you know, there's a variation. It, it makes sense. And, I mean, they already announced the Thor Love and Thunder thing. But guess what? They were in the comics. Well, we'll see if they do it like the comics. True. But... <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll wait we'll see. on that one. But I'm saying the character is established and it's in the yeah. comics. It already exists. You know, you have so many great female characters to choose from in the MCU, and you go and take a male character and make it female, and it just feels tokenized. It feels wrong. It feels like you're creating something that just shouldn't have been created in the first place. Yeah. It's true. And it's okay to create original characters, too. And... You have the brain power to do it. 
if you create an original character that's good and that has a good backstory, people and that will like that character and that character will develop a fan base. Exactly. Why would you take a character that already has a fan base and change it? You know, don't fix what's not broken because when you're fixing something like that, fixing something like that, you're breaking it. And you're going to get people that have a lot of negative reactions. I guarantee you, if they took um, the guy's daughter, whatever... Mm -hmm. uh, Drakov's daughter. Yes, made her into her own character. Well, they could they have used her had... throughout several more movies. And they still may, who knows. Yeah, but... they would have had a much more positive response than what they did to Taskmaster. Yeah. Well, part of the problem is a lot of people that don't read comics, don't necessarily play the video games, and are only familiar with the MCU, don't know who Taskmaster is. They've never heard of him before. They didn't realize that he was even a character that was previously known. Yeah, they're, they're tokenizing it for the movies, which you're you're kind of taking that character away from the people who actually know that character. Yeah. So, yeah, that. And then the whole, uh, <laughs> the pheromone thing with, oh, I have a pheromone that I release that you can't attack me. The bad guy, Drakov, was talking to Black Widow and she had to break her nose in order to beat him. Or sever the uh, nerve. Nerve, yeah. <laughs> that just seemed really. You couldn't weird stand to me. <laughs> across the room and shoot him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Guarantee it's not that bad. <laughs> and my probably my biggest complaint with this movie is honestly it should have been released after Civil War, or you know before Infinity Wars. And they just waited too long. I mean, we all know what happened to Black Widow in Infinity War. Or Endgame. Endgame. Yeah. And it just feels like this was just put out there. I don't know. I, I really like Black it. Widow as a character. But I feel like she deserves she deserved to have this movie sooner. Because if they released it like right after Endgame, it would be a lot more impactful. Now the dust well, has Well, they settled. tried... And in 2020, just... they tried in 2020, so I'll give them that. I mean, in game was 2019. They were going to release this 2020, but I think they should have done it after Civil War and not waited several movies after Civil War. And I feel Black Widow as a character deserved better villains than yeah. what they gave her in this, because the Drakov guy was <sighs> buffoonish. And we already talked about Taskmaster. And, you know, fighting-wise, Taskmaster was definitely up to task in fighting Black Widow. But at the same time... They never did explain the shield. The well, they, show, they showed her watching Captain America fight. Yeah, but... And, I mean, and she had the... Where'd she get the vibranium? Well, they didn't say it was vibranium. Yeah, but I don't know Cap is. Shield is, and I mean, that's right. why it, like, yeah. And it might have been. I mean, it was sticking into steel and all kinds of other... It wasn't bouncing around like Cap Shield, though, so I don't know. But she also did the Black Panther claw thing, too. So maybe they just had some vibranium laying around. Yeah, it's just laying around. <laughs> Rarest resource on Earth, and it's just laying around. Well, it's only rare outside of Wakanda. Yeah. It's not very rare in Wakanda. They got lots of it. Yeah, but how does she know where Wakanda is? I mean, well, how did the U.S. get it to make Captain America's shield? It's out there. Just got to know where to look. <laughs> so, I gave this a 7. Part of that rating was the stuff we discussed. I, I feel like Black Widow as a character just got robbed. I mean, I definitely... I enjoyed her character, and I still will. But I feel like half of this 
movie was also a setup for Yelena to go do her own thing because the mid credit scene shows well I can't even think of that lady's name but it shows she's the annoying in, girl from Falcon and the Winter Soldier yeah Elaine from Seinfeld uh, shows her talking to Yelena and saying that Hawkeye killed uh, Black Widow yeah but what's Natasha. Her name? Natasha yeah so that sets Yelena up to be in the Hawkeye series maybe as which will probably villain or something yeah which will probably set her up for her own series who knows but you know it was it was worth watching I liked it I would have liked it a lot more if they weren't idiots about how they did it yeah I'm Gen X I'm Gen Z and, and we, we are, are Generational, Generational Geeks, Geeks.